Pribyat comrades and today I will be brush painting this T34 tank. <laughs> and well, you can, might be also wondering why the gun is attached to the turret. It's because this kit is a full interior kit. And as you can see, there is a lot to paint through. And I will save this for another video that will be coming very soon. This video, I will just be only doing the upper turret and hull. And for priming, I use the Viejo surface primer. And it, well, it brush paints on pretty well. And all you have to do is add a couple drops of water and whatever the amount that you add. And all I do is just mix it and we can be now begin priming it. <laughs> brush painting scale models with primer well I mean it's it's not really anything difficult uh, as you saw I all I did is thin it down with water and luckily enough uh, this Viejo primer paint product uh, works well it's priming it on and applying it in thin layers to build up the full effect now that that's out of the way we can now begin uh, brush painting on the main base coat color. And I use flat yellow and Russian uniform World War II from Viejo. And I just add a few drops of Russian uniform and add a couple drops of flat yellow to get this sort of semi vibrant color. I don't want the color to be too dark as I will be using the distressing technique shown later on. With applying any acrylic colors from you know any brands that allow you to brush paint it on, uh, <laughs> you just have to build up it, the acrylic color in thin layers. And I'm sure maybe you have or you haven't seen my other videos of just applying it in thin layers, building it up, and it's well pretty easy. Uh, maybe not as efficient as an airbrush, but uh, you will see how well, simple it is just to build it up. You might uh, well, see some of my mistakes uh, later on, because I, well, I sort of messed up early on in the kit on having to fill some gaps and you know applying putty and we'll all hide that after with you know more chipping and weather effects and the winter whitewash which is coming up pretty soon right here but uh, i will learn from this hopefully and it'll be a whole lot better just wait till you see Don't be confused with the armor texture I applied on the model uh, with brush strokes. Well, because it isn't, and it would uh, seem a bit strange to applying these thin layers of paint and just to see it with really strange looking brush strokes. Just a, a reminder and heads up that it's just armor texture. I hope you're enjoying this video so far as weathering and applying the distressing technique to this Russian 234 tank was really a lot of fun. Now that we're done with the first base coat color, we can begin adding the distressing technique of chipping. Of Well, it's not really chipping, it's just adding different variations of color on the tank so that it won't look uniform and it add more interest to the vehicle and as you can see I just add uh, two drops of green gray and a drop of white with AK's uh, retarder and mix it in with a little bit of water to help thin it down and I won't be chipping it in you know with chipping fluid I'll be using it with uh, just a sponge which is fun and fast and easy 
you don't need to add a chipping fluid color uh, to the model as as I, I didn't have to and this was a lot of fun and efficient doing it this way also be sure not to flood your sponge with a lot of paint as you want to dab off the excess on a paper towel or napkin to only get little specks and random areas of chipping on the paint as it'll look nicely discolored and not uniform Depending on how you want you want your model to look on you know the distressing technique, I just add a little bit more white to the mix to get even uh, more discolored chips, as you would see on the vehicle, and you know just from debris or the crew moving around, and just to add more interest. And, and of course, it's your model, and you can do as you please. And I just, I really like this effect. It just looks great. I also apply it to the upper areas and sides of the turret. I then use green brown help give me a nice variation of color and I turn it into a filter so you know it's about one drop of the green brown color and uh, about five drops of water and I don't want to entirely cover the model uh, in just green brown I still want to leave a few patches of color that uh, will be lighter and then some will be a little bit more darker than others and this green brown filter will really help bring it together and I have to say I'm pretty happy with this effect it looks nice and pretty interesting in my opinion and you can really see the difference in the colors now I can begin adding this satin varnish to the model to help get it a nice not too glossy but also uh, not a matte finish just the right semi gloss look as you know as it says from the bottle uh, satin and I just thin it down in a couple drops of the satin varnish with uh, at least three drops or two of water and all I do is just slap it on the model uh, make sure it doesn't pull up and in, into big areas and it goes on nice and thin Now for chipping, I use Vejo's chipping medium and I believe I just add a nice thin layer of their chipping medium, also mixing it with water on to pretty much the entire model as I'm going to be slapping this thing with a nice, uh, not entirely intact winter whitewash. All right, time for the whitewash. I'm gonna be using this Viejo Molero White Gray to, with just with the same technique of sponge chipping, you know, just applying it with the sponge. And since this paint color is already so thin and it's already meant for, for use on airbrushes, I can just slap it on into mainly areas where I think uh, some chipping of the whitewash would come off. And don't worry, I know it may seem like a disaster of uh, like, oh no, you're ruining the bottle. But I will create my own adjustable acrylic whitewash with, without even using the uh, chipping medium that I applied on the model, as you saw me did earlier. And it'll really nicely tie up together the chipped whitewash color, and it'll look a whole lot better than what's going on right now. Then I start using the uh, chipping medium, or just covering it with water, moistening it, and I take a more of a, a rough stiff brush just to really uh, get rid of the paint. And since the under base color is covered with a satin varnish that protects it, 
and I won't have any risk of rubbing off any of that base coat color. Uh, I hope. <laughs> and we're here, I just have it sped up, I'm just going through it, and as I said before, I don't want it to be completely intact, but I don't want it to be pristine as a winter whitewash. And you know, when you even look at some of the historical photos of some of these things, it may not look accurate, but it's to my taste and it's to however what yours you, that you want it to be, you can leave it at whatever chipping whitewash that you want it to be. <laughs> but I'm just having it a, a lot of fun, you know, just moving the paint and uh, do, doing what's what's best for me and I'm still learning as this is my first chipped winter whitewash and I was pretty happy with this and the way it turned out okay now we can begin making the adjustable uh, acrylic whitewash by just adding the paint first I still use the white gray from model air vehicle a little bit of water and I mix it in with just hand soap which uh, I, I like this consistency that it gives me or I think you can even use uh, dish soap but uh, this is just what I'm using right here I mix it together uh, properly so that when I apply this adjustable winter whitewash it'll be nice and easy to remove even after I think even a full day or two hours minutes you can still remove it with just a uh, moistened uh, brush with water or with a cotton bud and it's very simple just to mix together it's no rocket science <laughs> it's very easy and if i can do it and i'm still relatively brand new to this hobby i think you could too and i personally i think it's a great alternative other than using you know uh oils and enamels because well, typically oils uh, are using odorless spirits and, you know a lot of smelly products that i don't like and that will give you headaches throbbing headaches over a full day and yeah uh, that, that's just my opinion that's just how i feel with it and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and i, I really like this effect and i'm continuing on with this technique of just creating my own wash uh, as it works being shown here. So the kit comes with a nice selection of decals. Uh, looks like some even German ones there, but I'm gonna be using some nice red Russian markings. Uh, and, and as I think they look pretty nice and it'll look pretty cool on the uh, on the winter whitewash and here I'll just you know, cut them out and I really like the what looks like to be uh, celebration day markings the, the victory day um, even if it may not even be historically accurate I just like the golden uh, look color of it it, it nicely appeals to the tank in my opinion but uh, <laughs> I just use water I flood it on the decal and just apply it on no gloss varnish no nothing of that matter I will be applying a you might know a viejo matte medium which is just clear paint and it'll very nicely conceal the the clear film that is present on the decal and even when you shine it under the light it is very hard to see but but even before i do that i will apply a microsol setting solution and it'll really uh blend into those subtle or almost subtle uh, armor texture uh, places on the model and it'll It'll do its best to seal into those certain crevices and it'll be very nice. And here I'm using neutral gray for the metal parts. You can uh, just use a dark gray or you know, mix black and white, uh, just whatever you have left around. And make sure it leaves it in a matte state. 
because I know sometimes Viejo paints are a little bit weird on just having, you know, sort of a satin finish when it's done drying or a glossy finish. And just a, even a slight colder steel uh, tone. This Luftwaffe uniform, as you saw, is very nice on just mixing with the neutral gray for a natural steel look. And there I apply the matte medium in I would say about two to three layers, uh, thin layers. Uh, don't make that mistake of applying it straight out of the bottle, you'll regret it. And it'll help conceal those decals and blend them into the model. And then a simple technique of just applying a sky blue uh, cool color which will make the model look like in a cold environment <laughs> as I believe that this effect will give it and it looks nice just make sure you thin it into a nice filter like color don't apply it in you know if it's just a little bit thin you really want to make sure it's translucent and now for the dark brown wash this dark brown wash is again from uh, Viejo uh, Model Air and this makes it very convenient for just applying it on the model and I don't apply it just straight out of the bottle I mix it with the same technique of as I did for the whitewash the adjustable whitewash I was mixing it with hand soap and uh, water but this time to improve the flow and I hope it flow even much better than with just water I apply isopropyl alcohol and a fair amount in like at least equal parts mixed in with the soap and water will destroy the high surface tension that water gives the wash and once you do that you even if you add even more you can really see that it kind of looks like I'm using oils or enamels just with the regular uh, you know, oiler spirits or whatever uh, thinner that they're using for enamels or oils and <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty happy with this it just does a nice job uh, no smell uh, unless you hate the smell of soap then I'm sorry but <laughs> uh, it, this is it's such a great uh, technique in use it saves you I believe some some time some money and just the qu quick and fast uh, drying time of acrylics is what I really like. I, I'd rather not wait, you know, days or hours and just only come back and find out that it's still drying. That's just uh, in my case. I like my models to be done in relatively quick haste, you know, but not sloppily. Um, even though maybe sometimes it does look like I did it sloppily. But I didn't <laughs> uh, and here I just did a little bit of color modulation or not even color modulation it's just a little bit of, of weathering the beginning stages of it just by adding the dark brown color on the side of the turret and well now uh, for a nice uh, chipping of color look of the model it, I just mix in uh, flat red and chocolate brown from Viejo I mix it in to get this nice tone and also add a drop of AK's retarder. I bring out this uh, relatively cheap thin brush that has a very nice uh, needle, needle nose look to it. <laughs> that, uh, As you can see, I'm not perfect or exactly great on chipping, but I'm trying to at least get small chips as much as possible. Uh, especially as a beginner uh, you have to really practice a lot more on just on areas where you think chipping would occur or trying to be as random as possible uh, just to where you think where you know metal would be exposed uh, and it's all up to you if you want to use a dark gray or uh, just a regular dark rust anything that will help uh, bring out the details of the vehicle and just looks like that yeah, it looks like steel that has been chipped uh, i then apply a, a little bit more red on the areas of where like on the shell impacts and the tracks of where uh, rust would have accumulated a little bit more i don't want it to be incredibly rusty but you know, it's just it's such a cool and nice effect and i really like it 
Now for the headlights, I add, or at least for the, yeah, it looks like a headlight. <laughs> I apply a silver uh, from vehicle and it just goes on very nicely. It looks very good and yeah, uh, this has gone really well so far. And here is the finished turret and hull. And well, not entirely finished. Now I obviously need to attach the gun mantlet and the main cannon. Uh, and you will see that in another video on the interior of this tank. And that <laughs> will be a lot of fun to show off on um, how many details I can paint in such a small little space of this vehicle. <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you next time. If you're interested, please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. And I have more photos of my other models on my Instagram, which is the same name of my YouTube channel, ModKids. And just look for the profile picture and you'll find me there. And uh, <laughs> this has been a lot of fun and thank you for watching so much. I'll see you next time.